SCP-003 The Biological Motherboard Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-003 is to be maintained at a constant temperature of no less than 35 degrees Celsius and ideally kept above 100 degrees Celsius. No living molecular organisms of Category 4 or higher your complexity may be allowed to be come into contact with SCP-003. In event of total power failure, if SCP-003-1 begins to increase its mass, assigned personnel must engage in skin contact with SCP-003-1. Ideally, personnel may use their body heat to return SCP-003-1 to above the critical temperature. However, skin contact must be maintained even in event of SCP-003 reaching activation temperature, lasting at minimum until SCP-003-1 advances fully to the second growth stage. Personnel who enter SCP-003's containment area must be examined for body parasites of category 4 or higher complexity and sterilized if such organisms are present. All personnel who have come into contact with SCP-003-1 are to immediately report sterilization afterwards. SCP-003-1 must not be removed from SCP-003-2 in case of emergency procedures detailed above. Any significant changes in SCP-0032's rune activity, including patterns, frequency, or colors, should be reported within th three hours of occurrence. Sensation of rune activity must be reported immediately. SCP-003-2 must be supplied with power via the source designated at generator 3339 at all times. Description: SCP-003 consists of two related, related components of separate or origin, referred to as SCP-003-1 and SCP-003-2. SCP-003-1 appears to be composed of ch of chitin, hair, and nails of unknown biology, arranged and configured similar to that of a computer motherboard. Testing reveals. SCP-003-1 for the day earliest known circuit board by any factor of thousands of years. SCP-003-1 is considered sentient, sentient but not actively dangerous except upon certain conditions. SCP-003-2 is controlled by a non-biological internet internal computer, the contents of which are mostly inaccessible without risk of damaging an SCP-003-2. SCP-003-2 is capable of controlled emissions of radiation, including heat, light, and anomalous radiation types. SCP-003-2 contains an internal power source of an anomalous nature, which appears to have been losing power since several centuries before discovery. It is considered probable SCP-003-2 was created for the purpose of containing SCP-003-1. Partially interpreted, interpreted data recovered from SCP-003-2 may refer to a past and or potential future LK-class restructuring event caused by SCP-003-1. SCP-003 was located by remote viewing from SRV-04 Beta. It appears possible that SCP-04 Beta was deliberately contacted by SCP-003-2. Other organizations have also been alerted to SCP-003's existence. Not location. Probably by similar means. Despite this activity, SCP-003-2 does not appear to be saint sentient based on its lack of reaction to MO3 Georgia analysis and procedures. When SCP-003 drops below the temperature of 
35 degrees Celsius, both components react. First, SCP-003-1 enters a growth state characterized by exponential increases in, in mass. This growth state consists of two stages. In both stages, SCP-003-1 partially fuels its growth by converting matter around it, starting with any surroundings inorganic material, including atmospheric elements, then non-living organic material, including cells of dead skin, hair, chin on the chitin, enamel, character, and other biological material. But the first stage is always the same. SCP-003-1 will first increase its mass, then take a form similar in shape to an ophiroid brittle star, 15 meters in diameter, including what appears to be a central processor of 3 meters in diameter. It will, from sensory organs, appear to scan its surrounding environment, and will partially convert the area around it to be an unidentified anomalous substance. SCP-003-2 seems immune from conversion. The second stage describes its growth alteration, which occurs when SCP-003 comes in contact with living organic material, and will attempt to com- attempt a communication with organisms that match its initial template or templates. In its second stage, SCP-003 may cause slow or change its- and also convert inorganic and non-living organic elements into functionally similar structures while anomalously entering entering their physical makeup. All growth is constant in the first stage. In the second stage, SCP-003-1's growth rate is diminished by 20-90% so long as SCP-003-1 is in contact with living organic material. The percentage is determined by the complexity of the organism. In contact with SCP-003-1, SCP-003-1 appears to devote a large amount of processing power to analyze, to analysis of living organic material. During each of SCP of SCP-003-1's growth growth stages. SCP-003-2 releases bursts of radiation and temporarily inhabits SCP-003-1's growth or reverse this growth. When the temperature of SCP-003-1 rises above 100 degrees Celsius, similar radiation emissions have been replicated or recorded via another anomalous means. SCP-001 3-1's biology has been the subject of extensive study. Significant elements have been identified similar to SCP SCP-1512 and SCP-2756. The latter two the latter two of which no further confirmed connection with SCP-003-1 and no other connections with each other, and none of which are fully understood. Technically, even less understood than SCP-003, thanks to the extensive cross-disciplinary research on the SCP-003 objects. To date, no convincing analysis has been put forward which satisfies explanations SCP-003-1 connections to these SCP objects or others, nor its connection to modern technology beyond appearance and potential mimicry via unknown mechanisms. Acting on information gathered from linguistic analysis of SCP-003-2's runes and comparative data analysis, Research team MOA Gloria has managed to establish a link between SCP-003 and for analysis of functions. SCP-003-1 must be 
must now be considered sentient and is to be kept a minimum of one kilometer from and the results byproduct at all times. SCP-003-2's power loss has been exacerbated by the procedures performed by the M- MO3 Gloria on orders of L510. MO3 Gloria will continue procedures. During MO3 Gloria procedures, SCP-003-1 doubled, it, doubled its mass and began rapid its structural growth. Temperature was immediately turned to 100 degrees Celsius. Growth and mass increase of SCP-003-1 continued from 9 minutes and 6 seconds, exactly. At which time, a a sustained radiation spike was produced by SCP-003-2 in response. SCP-003-1 returned to its normal state in 3 minutes and 39 seconds. New growth developed into a, a dusty residue which was collected for analysis. Both SCP-003-1 and SCP-003-2 ceased all detectable activity. SCP-003-2 did not resume activity until connected to an external power source. SCP-003-2 2's rune glowed I'm formerly gray and did not resume normal activity for three minutes. SCP-003-2 no longer appears to be able to maintain containment area at a temperature above 35 degrees Celsius without external power supply by generator 003-9. through The procedure to Held and Abdurum 003-03 was repeated, and SCP-003-1 again entered the growth state. After 10 minutes and 13 seconds, SCP-003-2 once again produced a sustained radiation spike. SCP-003-1's growth stopped for 36 seconds and then resumed its previous phase. On quadrupling its mass, SCP-003-1 formed a, a coherent outer shell and body. After appearing to scan its environment and partially converting its environment, SCP-003-1 then breached containment. Entering the observation gallery where nine members of M- M03 Gloria was present, on physical contact with team members, SCP-003-1 and compassed it them in rapid growth appendages and stopped growth for 15 minutes. SCP-003-1 then resumed growth and rearranged the component parts of the center of his own, his own form to, to the shape of a, a three-meter tall female humanoid with with apri- with apriheral tentacles Shifting to extrude primarily from SCP-003-1's newly found hair and spine, SCP-003-1 then proceeded remotely vocalizations and an apprehended in to attempt to communicate with researchers. An unknown individual approached to come. The compromised containment area and company of a full squad of agents. The individual claimed to be acting on orders of O510 and attempted communication with SCP-003-1. Following this incident, following this incident, Agent Jackson of Agent Jackson of M03 Gloria successfully restored power to SCP-003-2 and activated backup generators to return the temperature to 100 degrees Celsius. SCP-003 returned to its normal state in 21 minutes and 7 seconds, and was re- successfully recontaminated without incident. All nine members of MO3 Gloria affected by SCP-001-3 were afterwards 
to be physically unharmed with no residential effects besides psychological trauma. The converter material of SCP-003's his former containment area did not dissolve and are now under analysis. In light of the previous incident, O510 was removed from the O5 cancel, but joint decision of O5, O5, and O5. MO3 Gloria yeah, procedures have been indefinitely suspended. Excerpt 35A. She tried to talk to us. We all heard her voice in our heads, in a sort of half language we couldn't fully understand. Some of the others passed out immediately. I lasted a little longer, but it wasn't because of mental fortitude. It's just that she was trying to tell us different things. She showed Jones a replay of all the memories of everything. Jones ever felt anything about. All over the course of a few minutes. She ripped three of the researchers apart and put them back together unharmed. She doesn't understand human emotion, or pain, or very much about how we experience the world. Yes, I would say the containment procedures are necessary. Listen, she wants to remake the world. Into a paradise. A paradise filtered through her own alien understanding of paradise, but still, a paradise designed for us for humanity. She would be happy to make a paradise for any sufficiently complex organism she comes across first. Anything with a complex enough mind to accept her. Say, a dog. Or a housefly. If the breach is again, we have to be there first. What would it be like? I don't know. She showed us images not quite images. I can see them in my head, but they're not pictures. The closest thing I can think of is what you see when you close your eyes suddenly and tightly but brighter and more complex. The images had metallic sounds associated with them, and sensory details that we don't have the words or concepts to describe. The whole effect felt like words of some kind. I believe she wanted to see what we could understand, so she could understand us. She didn't have time to finish analyzing us. I don't know what would happen if she had.